Oh, hello. Today, you know, I feel like I need something to be excited about for 2025. I need something to look forward to. So we're going to just do a cute little anticipated reads of 2025 video. Uh, because this year I have been focused so much on backlist, I've actually not been keeping up as closely as I normally would with a lot of the releases that are going to be coming out. So my list this year is very demure, very mindful, very, you know, uh, I say that I think there's still like 20, 20, 25 books, but normally I have, you know, like 50 by now. And I just, that's not the vibe for me this year. Um, we're really just recentering on the front list. I'm truly very excited about. So I don't think I have a particular order that I've put these in. I'm looking over here at the side, by the way, to my computer. Um, so maybe, okay, let's start with, let's start with sequels. Then we'll go to authors that I'm excited about and then other. <laughs> so sequel wise, theoretically, maybe there will be a Tessa Dare at the end of 2025. They keep just pushing the date out, and I don't know if we'll ever actually get this book, The Bride Bet, but that would be the fourth book and the final book in the Girl Meets Duke series. And you know what, Tessa? We need you. <laughs> now, more than ever, we need some light historical fluff fun, so that would be great. Um, but that's a sequel, theoretically, I'm looking forward to. In September of next year, there will be another addition to the Thursday Murder Club series, which I'm very excited about. I will be doing that as audio because that's how I have been doing Richard Osman books. Still need to read We Solve Murders, but that I have a plan this weekend for some audio time. So I'm going to listen to that. Anyway, um, Thursday Murder Club. Yeah, the fourth book made me ugly cry, sob, heave. And I desperately want to know where we go from here and what's what, what the gang is up to. So I'm very, very excited for that. I don't think it has a title yet, but number five. Then let's see. Theoretically, we're getting the uh, next book in the Morgan Crow series by Jessica Townsend, which is called Silverborn. It's been pushed a couple of times. Now it's sitting in April. I gotta say, the more time goes on, the less I'm inclined to read it, just because I don't have a strong of connection of what was happening. So this might be a library read, and maybe maybe I've even graduated to thinking of this as if I'm in the mood to read it, I will. Or maybe I'll graduate it to like, once the series is fully released, I'll catch up. But yeah. I it there's long pauses in between these releases so we'll see then two sequels that I'm not sure if I'm gonna read or not because I kind of liked them as standalones so one is that um I read The Tainted Cup this year by Robert Jackson Bennett and really enjoyed it as a fantasy mystery and I actually quite liked the way it worked as a standalone but there is a sequel coming out called A Drop of Corruption so I may this might be one that I wait and see how people are responding to it before I decide if I'm going to read it because I kind of liked it as a standalone so we'll see um let me actually now that I'm thinking about it let's see if it has a follow-on. You know, based on the description, this might be a little bit less of a, it might be more of an episodic kind of sequel versus a full-on continuation. So for that reason, I'm actually a little more interested in it. Hmm. Watch the space. I, I'm intrigued by that idea. The other one that I'm not sure if I'm going to read or not, again, I'll probably see what people are saying, is Kills Well with Others, which is the sequel to Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. And I quite enjoyed Killers of a Certain Age. That's probably my favorite Deanna Rayborn I've read so far. Um, I don't know that I need it to be a sequel, though. I did like that one as a standalone. So uh, this one I'm more iffy on because I really, I thought it ended well so like why keep going the answer is money but what you gonna do okay and then 
What other series do I have sequels? A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping by Sanju Mandana. This is the sequel to The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. And I liked that one quite a bit. I think I gave that four stars. So I'm intrigued to read more from this, this author in that world. But not one that's like super high priority, more of a like, yeah, what I'm in the mood for that kind of book, sure. Okay, and then the last one, no, that's not true. I was gonna say the last one with an actual date, JK. Uh, the second to last one with an actual date is Bonded in Death by J.D. Robb. There will be two, likely two in-death books next year, one in February, one in September. Um, I have an e-arc of Bonded in Death, which is the one in February. I read all of those books. I'm fully caught up. So duh, I will read it. I'm hoping that Mavis and Peabody are actually moving into that freaking house because it's been a long time. Um, and then finally, Tea with the Altar by Rebecca Thorne is in the Tomes and Tea series. I really like the first book. The second one I haven't read yet, but I'm assuming it will also be cozy and lovely. And so therefore, I'm also looking forward to the third one. I want to say that one is coming out sometime in the spring, though it doesn't say in this particular view. Okay, those were all of the sequels with actual dates. I have some others that I've been tracking that don't have dates associated. So they're just like theoretical sequels versus actual sequels. So then let's turn to authors that I know that I like. So we've got Grady Hendrix has one called Witchcraft for Wayward Girls. I have an arc. I will be reading that one. Um, he has a very campy, fun horror, and that is very much my vibe. And then Janice Hallett, who I am loving these days, she writes sort of multimedia kind of puzzle box type mysteries that are really fun. She has two that I see. One is called A Box Full of Murders, which comes out in February. And then the other one is called The Killer Question, which comes out in August. So I don't see descriptions for either of these, or actually, wait, maybe that's a lie. I think a box of murders might have it. Okay, yeah. So uh, siblings Ava and Luke discover a mysterious notebook in their dad's attic. They're instantly intrigued. And as they read through the diaries, letters, newspaper cuttings, and secret recordings, they realize that a decades old still unsolved murder case is unfolding right in front of them. So I don't know how long this one is because it was only available in paperback. Oh, it's 400 pages still. So I pre-ordered this from Waterstones, um, you know, while tariffs are still reasonable. <sighs> um, I pre-ordered this. So I'm not sure why it's a paperback original versus a um, having a hardback like her books normally do. Maybe it's YA? Maybe, is that? It's, by, it's being published by Puffin. Yeah, I don't, oh yeah, Random, Ping and Random House is Children's UK. Okay, so that's why it's a paperback original, because it's a children's book. Okay, I'm intrigued to see how she handles a YA kind of book. That would be really interesting, actually. I mean, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so she basically then has a YA book coming out and an adult one. The YA one is in February, the adult one is in August. Kimberly Lemming has a new series that's called Cosmic Chaos, the title will tell you every reason why I want to read it. I got abducted by aliens and now I'm trapped in a rom-com. God bless you, Kimberly, for just, she gets the vibe, she leans into it, and I, I can't help but stand. So I think you can understand from <laughs> that title alone why that is such a Mara book. That sounds like it's meta. It sounds like it's funny. It sounds like it's speculative. All the things that I love most. Um, and then Olivia Waite has a murder mystery thing coming out. She's normally a contemporary rom romance author who I really enjoy. Um, and, or sorry, not a contemporary, uh, sorry. Wrong, wrong Olivia. She's a historical romance author who I have really enjoyed, um, who does like, uh, oh gosh, what was it? Uh, the Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. I really enjoyed that. Um, 
Yeah, so I am excited to see what she does with a sci-fi murder mystery. So it's a memory called Empire meets Miss Marple in this cozy space board mystery helmed by a no-nonsense, form formidable auntie of a detective. Well, that sounds delightful. Uh, it's like an isolation trope because they're on a spaceship. It's, the, it's showing as Dorothy Gentleman number one. So I think we're getting a series of these. And I am so excited. This sounds like a delight. Once again, this is just everything that I like in a book. So this should definitely be for me. And then, uh, what else? Oh, okay, a couple more just from authors I like. There's a theoretical Talia Hibbert coming out called Skybriar that's been pushed like two years already. So who knows if that's happening. Um, T. Kingfisher has one in August called Hemlock and Silver that's coming out. Um, I think that this is her sort of like speculative book of the year, sort of in the vein of Nettle and Bone and Thornhedge and A Sorceress Comes to Call. Um, this one is... Uh, a dark reimagining of Snow White steeped in poison, intrigue, and treason of the most magical kind. The, a healer's summoned to treat a mysterious illness afflicting the king's daughter. She finds herself racing against the clock, desperate to save um, Princess Snow. She has a taciturn bodyguard, a narcissistic cat, and a late Renaissance understanding of the scientific method assisting her. Again, some of these is just like, I don't even know what to say. It's just like, that's me. That's my vibe. That sounds great. I freaking adore King F T. Kingfisher. So of course that's going to be great. Um, can't wait for it. Put it in my eyeballs. Okay. And then the last from an author who I just like that I'm excited about is the RF Kuang release, which is Kata Basis. Um, and it's a, let's see, two academic rivals from Cambridge must travel, travel to hell to rescue the soul of their advisor. Getting there was easy. Surviving it and each other is an entirely different thing. And I think that this is sort of like her take on a romanticy, but because it's T, big, not T Kingfisher, because it's R.F. Kuang, I imagine it's going to be like the dark version of a fantasy romance sold. Again, just what else, what else do I need to hear to know that this is going to be great? Um, yeah. Okay. So those are all the ones from authors that I know and like, and then, um, okay. A couple from people that I know and like, but I don't know about them as an author yet. One is that Bob the Drag Queen has a fictional book coming out called Harriet Tubman Live in Concert. And it seems like it's sort of a magical realism take on Harriet Tubman's life. And Bob is such a smart, interesting person that I'm very intrigued to see what a novel from him is going to look like. Um, yeah, so I don't know, not necessarily a genre I would normally gravitate towards, but I'm very into the idea of a book from Bob the Drag Queen. And then Dan McClellan, who is on TikTok, he's the guy who is like always debunking these, you know, things people say that the Bible says that it doesn't actually say. He has the like, let's hear it. Like, and he does the intersplicing clips. Um, I follow his podcast sometimes. Like I listen to his podcast. I enjoy him. And he has a book coming out called The Bible Says So, What We Get Right and Wrong About Scripture's Most Controversial Issues. Like, I don't know for sure that this is one that I'll read, but I'm at least intrigued by it because I like him. And he, I think especially, well, like I'm, I'm thinking back in my like progressive evangelical days, this would have been something very interesting to me nowadays, less so, but um, yeah. Anyway, if you follow him and like him, just putting that on your radar as well. Uh, let's see here. What other things do I have that I already have arcs of? So I've got a few mysteries I've already gotten arcs of, and all of these are things that are just in my wheelhouse. And that's why I was like, yes, I should probably get that because I will like it. One is The Other People by C.B. Everett. This sounds like a country house isolated close circle mystery. Sold. That sounds great. That's right up my alley. I don't think I have an actual release date for that one right now. At least not listed here, but I thought, I seem to remember it was sometime in the spring. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, you Are Fatally Invited comes out on February uh, 11th and it is by Ande Pelego. And let's see, 
an exclusive thriller writer's retreat hosted on a private island turns lethal when one of the authors is found murdered in this twisty locked room mystery. That is my kind of book. I feel like I'm getting, I have to, I have to say, publishing has been keeping me supplied with a solid like five of these a year recently. And I just appreciate it because I get that it's not for everyone. It's like not everybody's favorite trope, but it is so clearly my favorite trope that I'm just like, thank you for helping me stay in my favorite <laughs> trope. Um, and then This Is Not a Game by Kelly Mullen. This comes out in April. And let's see, a, two unlikely detectives, a killer cocktail of suspects. Uh, let's see here. There's a big mansion where there's a big cocktail party happening. And then, uh, and it's the POV of like an older lady, like she's a Mima and somebody dies, a second body turns up. So the Mima and her granddaughter are like solving this uh, uh, killers at this party. So that definitely feels like something that's very me. And then is that it? Am I already done? This seems so shocking because I'm so used to having so many books. I mean, like there's ones that I know that I'll want to read, like the new Side Changeling book, though I still have to read this year's. Um, oh God, what else? I'm sure there's going to be a Nora Roberts standalone in the spring that I'll want to read. Uh, yeah, I mean, there'll, there'll be other things that come up. But for now, like I said, a very demure, very mindful list. Not too crazy. And hopefully gives you some things to look forward to in the next year as it is giving me things to look forward to. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, let me know if I'm missing anything glaring from my list. Cause like I said, I feel like I've not done as good of a job of keeping up with front list in the last year because I've been more focused on my backlist stuff. So if you're like, duh, Mara, you know that this is coming. How is this not on your list? Please let me know so that I can put it on my list and get excited with you. So yeah, that will do it for me. Um, if you like the video, like it. And I'm, I'm, you know, because it's getting into winter, I'm a little bit more in my hibernation phase. I imagine you'll be seeing a little bit more of me in the next few months. Also, I love your end content. So it's like my time to shine. I love all the Goodreads Choice Award stuff. Like this is my favorite time of year content wise. So you'll definitely be seeing me a little bit more, but still hit the bell if you wanna know exactly what I'm gonna post because I don't always know what I'm gonna post. And yeah, I think that'll do it for me. Hope you're having a great one. Take care of each other and I will talk to you soon.